Hi guys, welcome to the first virtual lab of Chem 300. So this week, we will be working on the measurement and uncertainty lab. So the purpose of this lab is for you to learn how to make scientific measurements using the rule of significant figures and be able to report where the uncertainty exists in your own measurement. And you will also learn how to calculate the average and the standard deviation and how we can use those to also quantitatively describe your precision and accuracy. So here is the outline of this lab. So first, there are three types of measurement that will be making. First one is the mass measurement. And then the second one will be the volume measurement. And lastly, the length measurement. Now for the mass and the volume measurement, you will be using the data that we have provided you with. And the reason why is because you do not have the instruments to make the mass and the volume measurement at home safely. But as for this last part right here on the length measurement, then this is something that you need to collect your data at home. So now let's go over the mass measurement. In this lab right here, we'll have you guys measure the mass of the Hersey kisses. And you will learn how to use the analytical balance to do this. So given the analytical balance as follow over here. So in this case right here, this is the mass of bow of the weighted bolt by itself, right? And right now we can see that the mass E being displaced right now is 2.703. So this mass right here corresponds to the mass of the weighted bolt. And then we then add on the Hersey kiss along with this weighted bolt right here. And now the total mass of both the weighted bolt and the Hersey kiss, in this case, equal to 7.376 gram. Now our goal is to figure out what is the mass of the Hersey case. So therefore, you will have to take the final mass, subtract the initial mass, and that will then give you the mass of the first Hersey case. And there are three Hersey cases that Hersey cases that we need you guys to make measurement of. And in the end, your goal is to find what is the average mass of the Hersey cases. So here is the data for the second Hersey kiss. So here is the weight and bolt, the second weight and bolt, and here will be that weight and bolt along with the second Hersey kiss. And this is the third weight and bolt and the third Hersey kiss. And again, these are the masses. So from, from here, you expect it to be able to figure out what is the mass of this Hersey kiss. And in the end, you need to complete this data table. And here is how it go. So Hersey kiss number one, number two, and number three. And these are the masses that we have obtained based on as an example. So again, you do not have, so these are some value that we kind of make up as hypothetical data. So let's say this are the masses of the Hersey kiss number one, number two, number three, and you will then need to complete this following table right here by calculating the average mass of the Hersey kiss, and you also need to calculate the standard deviation, and then finally report your, your value of what is the mass of the Hersey kiss. So let's go over how we will be able to round and report experimental data that we obtain. Now, so first, calculate the unrounded average. And so these are the masses of the three different Hersey kits right here. And now we need to find the average. And to find the average, we simply add the mass of the three Hersey kisses together and then divide it by three. So in this case right here, this would then equal to this value. Now, it's really important that initially you do not round this value right here. So do not round yet. And include as many decimal places as you can with a minimum of three decimal places. And so how we will be able to uh, know a minimum of three decimal places, if we were to go back to the mass of each of the in individual Hersey cases, they are all reported to three decimal places. So in this case, you need to include at least three decimal places or more, but do not round this value. And the reason why is because we need to round this answer right here in such a way that corresponds to where did the uncertainty exist in this average value. And right now, we don't know exactly 
which of the decimal place or place do the uncertainty exist, right? Now, when we take a look at all of this data right here, we can see that all of this, the mass of these three Hersey kisses right here, deviate from each other quite a little bit, right? We have 4.805, and now we have 5.184. So they quite deviate a little bit. So that tells us that there's some uncertainty or some deviation that exists between here. So how do we now report the value in such a way that tell all the people what a, whether the uncertainty exists in this average value? So this is why we have to leave this value unrounded at this point. Now, to figure out how to round this average value right here that really show where the uncertainty exists in, in it, then the next step of what we have to do is calculate the standard deviation. So the standard deviation by definition is basically where does this data begin to deviate or different from each other. And the equation to calculate the standard deviation are listed on the description of your lab report. And here I'm showing you an example of how it being uh, uh, calculated by using this set of hypothetical data from above. So here in this case right here, the standard deviation is then equal to the first data point, the 4.805 minus the average value. And make sure we include all of the decimal places on this unrounded average value. And the answer to this squared plus the second data point minus the average square again plus the third data point minus the average square again. And if we were to have the fourth and the fifth data point, we continue to do the same thing. So what that that's that what the sigma or the sum of mean based on this standard deviation. And then we would then divide everything by n minus three. In this case right here, n is the number of data point that we have. And in this case, it's 3 because we have 3 data point, so 3 minus 1. And after we have obtained all the answer in this within this math operation right here, we will then need to take the square root of this. And after we have taken the square root, this is what the standard deviation will be. And initially, please write out this unrounded value. Okay, so it's really important that we show what this unrounded value would be. And once we have obtained the standard deviation already, we would always round the standard deviation to one significant figure. So that's how we will round the standard deviation to always one significant figure. And in this case, when we round this value to one significant figure, it becomes 0.2. So why do we always round the standard deviation to one significant figure? The reason is because of the meaning of it. Right, so this tell this tell us right here that how much the average value can deviate, and if the average value can deviate on this decimal place right here, this first decimal place, then the certainty in the later decimal places would not even matter. Does that make sense? So because the data be already begin to deviate on this first decimal place, this it overrides the certainty in the other digits. So therefore, they become insignificant, and we don't care about them. So that's the reason why that we uh, would always round that to one significant figure. And after we have round this one significant figure already, it's really important that we now pay attention how many decimal place or place that this value have. And that tells us how we should round the average answer. Now, so the third step is to now round the average based on the rounded standard deviation. And so Again, the rule is as follows. Round the average to the same number of decimal place or place as the rounded standard deviation. So in this case right here, we our unrounded average is 4.91433. And now we have to round this to one decimal place. And again, the reason why one, de one decimal place is because the rounded standard deviation has one decimal place in it. Okay, If the standard deviation were to be rounded to the one place, then now we'll be rounding our average to the one place as well. And if and similarly, if the rounded average have two decimal places, then we'll be rounding our average to two decimal places as well. Good. And so going back here to this example, we now need to round this to one decimal place, which equal to 4.9. So what that tells us right, and now is that when we report this value right here, that tells us that the tenth, the, this digit right here, this one decimal place, or a tenth of a gram, 
that is where we begin to see the masses of the Hirsch's kisses deviate within each other. And now it can deviate by 0.2, because that's what it would be. So therefore, when we finally report this data, this is the format of how we would report our data. The format is the rounded average plus and minus the standard deviation. And now the rounded average is now 4.9 and the standard deviation is now 0.2. So we'll be reporting this at 4.9 plus and minus 0.2. This means that on average, the mass of the Hirsch kiss is 4.9. However, it can be 0.2 higher or 0.2 lower. And when this is 0.2 higher, it becomes 5.1. When it becomes 0.2 lower, it becomes 4.7. So this tells us that the mass of the Hirsch kisses can anywhere between 4.7 to 5.1 gram. And looking back at this data right here, this is how we can see that the masses of Hirsch of the three Hirsch kisses are within that range that we have just seen down here. So that's why that we have to use this method right here to now show in our data where does this uncertainty exist in in our measurement in our set of data and I do the same thing with the volume measurement so in this volume measurement right here please read the instruction on how to perform this volume measurement and this are the data that it provided to you so in this case right here again make sure you read uh, this using the rule of significant figures so the volume here may be difficult to see but then uh, in reality this is what it will be and you need to be able to read it and here is zoom in picture of it. So read this volume on here. And again, the first step is for you to find the smallest increment. Okay. And after we have the smallest increment already, divide that by 10. And that tells us how many decimal places that we need to report our measurement to. So this is your data for the uh, for, for this volume measurement. And that and this is the data from the second trial. And this is the data from the third trial. And this is where you'll be re reporting your value in. So we do have a data table for you to report your volume of water. And this is from trial one, trial two, and trial three. And so these are the data from three trials. Then you first need to find the average and make sure this is the unrounded average right here. And then find your standard deviation and round the standard de deviation to one significant figures. And finally, uh, the reported value would be the uh, average value plus and minus the standard deviation when the standard deviation have one uh, have, is one significant figures so in this case we can we see that this is the standard deviation when we round this to one significant figure it become point 0.1 which have one decimal place so that tells us to go back and round this value here to one decimal place okay so this would be the format of how you would need to report your volume of water and lastly the length measurement so this length measurement right here is the part that you need to collect your own data and the step are as follow first obtain a ruler and make sure you use an SI ruler basically means that they have the unit FS unit in it in this case centimeter marking on it and then obtain a rectangular up block of your choice so make sure you choose an, a block uh, that is basically smaller than your ruler, right? So you have enough uh, so you can read your measurement. And then measure the dimension of your block. And then take three pictures of your data. One picture for the length, one picture for the height, and one picture for the width. And then report the data on the data table on the next page. Now, it's really important to follow it. When we have this block right here, these are the definition of height, length, and width. So the width is the shortest size, and the height uh, is the medium size, and the length is the longest size. Okay, So that's how we concept the length, height, and width. And for each of this length and height and width right here, there are four edges. And so therefore, you need to read four measurements for each of the four edges. For an example, when it comes down to height, because this block right here, and in fact, most blocks are not perfectly cut uh, or make. So therefore, they may be different in height depending on which edge that we measure. So for example, we can measure one edge from here, and that gives us one height. 
we can also read the one in the back and that can give us another value and similarly another edge right here and another edge right here so we can see there are four edges for height so make sure you read all of those and now take only one picture of it but then there are four uh, edges that you need to read and same thing with the length when you read the length you would read one, one length from here another length from the other edge another length from this edge right here and lastly another length from this, this edge so there are four there should be four readings for each of the length height and width and then take a picture for an example this is the types of data that we want you to collect take a ruler align the ruler and mix to make sure the zero is now aligned with one of the edge and then see where the other edge would be and then take a picture of it and then show what this reading would be so this is the data that you have to submit along with your report and in this case right here make sure you also read this you using significant figure as well so in this case right here the smallest increment in here is 0.1 of a centimeter and now we have to read to two decimal places so therefore this length right here in this case is 10.05 centimeter and now for the calculations on this uh, block measurement right here so there are four edges for length height and width and so this is a example of a hypothetical set of data so this are the length of the uh, um, the measurement for the four measurement of the four edges that correspond to the width so we need to report them and then here for the height and here for the length and now you need to find the average and again make sure that this is the unrounded average okay so we should include with more decimal places than two so in this case the minimum that you need to include would be two but i would recommend you carry a few more decimal places in here because we do not know how to the rounded at this point yet okay and now we also want you to find the area and here in this case right here we define the area at the width times the height so take the width times the height multiply by it and that the surface area of this edge and for the second edge take this width times this height and that give us the area of this second edge and so on and now you would then again find the average of the area of these four edges right here and same thing with the volume volume a length time height time width or if you have the error already then now you can multiply the length along with it and again make sure you write the unrounded value in here now we just don't have the place to put those value but you should be reporting the unrounded value okay and after we have found all of this uh, uh, data over here then now you need to find the average so the average of this width the average height and the average length so that's what this value corresponds to and then find the standard deviation for each of this as well and after we have the standard deviation for this or, or let's say use an example of this uh, of this width so this is the average and that the standard deviation when we round this one significant figure it become 0.08 which have two decimal places on it so therefore that tells us to now go back and round our average to two decimal places and in this case this value have two decimal places but again make sure you include more so when we finally report this value right here well what is the average width it now become 3.59 plus and minus 0 0.08 so that's what we will have over here and same thing for do the same thing for the height and the length as well now let now try another example with the volume so in this case this is the average volume and after we have calculated the standard deviation it now become 29.25 so we first need to round this to one significant figure which then become 30 right and 30 is now have the answer on the 10 so that tells us to now round to go now go back to average our average and round it to the 10 so therefore we're going to cut up right here so this then become 1120 and therefore here the followed by plus and minus 30 good so that is so we'll be using this same way this same step right here to report all of our measurement 
and it's very important that you remember this because anytime we perform experiment to collect data and we do multiple trials to collect the data then this is how we, we will be reporting our data to show where the uncertainty exists in our final answer that we are reporting and as for your lab report then make sure you show all of the required calculation that we asked you to and answer all of the post lab questions.